What is going on, everyone? Deej is here, back with round one, game two of the Fog Goblin Goblet. My god, the last game just blew my mind. I might have to rewatch that game later. That was nuts. But the game goes on. I'm not going to give any spoilers in case you haven't seen it yet until we get to the finals. But we have round one, game two, between Mr. Hogat, seed number two, and Mr. Inkagark, seed number three. Both of these players, phenomenal players. Hogat is one of the few who can put up the same level as Go, and I think he's beaten him once, maybe even twice, uh, Go. It's a very difficult feat in non-live fog. Uh, more recently, I beat Go back in like January or like September or some crap, 2021, when he was more vulnerable. No one has beat him recently, except for Hogat. So Hogat earned his number two seed. Very strong player. He's under the account Togat for his alt. Going for Rachel, Inkagark is going under the name Incargo for his alt. You guys know him. He's been in Mang's uh, tournament, or Mang's and I's uh, Grandmasters tournament. He's great at standards, good at high funds, he's good at fog. He's number three seed. He earned his keep. He's like 3 0 versus Tordred, maybe 4 0. He's, I don't know if he's played Hogat or Go yet, but insane player. Very calculated, though. Loves artillery, very calculated. Now, for the matchup, we got double Rachel's. Makes sense for Hogat. You know, you want to have balled up stuff, artillery, elongate the game, then use cover and fire. Hogat apparently also thinks uh, Rachel is the pick for this map. This is a larger map. This is in uh, Redemption World. This is an old school Global League map. Some of y'all might recognize this map. I did a replay analysis way back in December of this very map right here. Uh, pretty standard map, not too much to say about it. Three, two base versus one base airport, separated by a pipe seam over here. That usually gets, does not get broken the entire game. Most of the contested properties are these four right here, as well as these two over here and these two over here. This game could take so many variety of different ways. There's no one way to win. Usually it's more of a tank map than an artillery map, because artillery aren't that great until you get control of this forest, which is easier said than done. So Inkagark might be at a little bit of a... Uh, disadvantage because he loves artillery so much and they're not quite as viable on this map as tanks and recon. My god, recons of tanks are good on this map. Look at those roads. Look at those planes. That's why Lash isn't much of a play here. And the cities are pretty far spaced out, so Kindle is not quite as good as usual. Uh, Andy's also a very strong pick on this map. Andy into Rachel would have been pretty nice in my opinion, even though Inkagark has demonstrated that anti into Rachel is not a guaranteed win by any means. Rachel can put up a strong fight using CO power, spam, etc. So yeah, two very strong players. So unfortunately, while I was recording this live, the file got corrupted and I cannot play it or use it. So I did what any normal rational person would do when I found it was corrupted. I went straight to my kitchen, opened the drawer, grabbed my spatula, slammed it down as hard as I could onto the counter and smashed it into a million different pieces and shouted every obscenity under the sun. But now we got to move forward. I'm re-recording it now on this replay viewer. I got rid of, the, so you cannot see Hogat's or uh, Inkergard's units right now. Luckily, so it's going to resemble what their game actually was like at the beginning. Uh, the only difference is you will be able to see capped buildings and some sort of movement at the bottom. But I want to keep that, you know, original feeling where you can only see one point of view. Anyway, let's get to the game itself. Hogat starting off the top as the red player. One thing that's unusual about this map, Redemption World, is you have odd builds here. You kind of have weird amounts of income at a certain time. Often you find yourself with 8,000 funds, which is enough for two infantry and an artillery, which is kind of awkward because a lot of people like to start off on the tank. See right here, Hogat starts off with 8,000. Some people like to go early recon, some people like to get artillery, some people like to save up for a tank, some people like to save up and then buy artillery and tank in the same turn or something like that. Uh, let's see what Hogat does right here. I believe he, go, he opts for holding out and just going for the infantry focus. Some people build an APC, I forgot to mention. APC is kind of viable, can help you get to these properties over here. Another thing, the most contested properties on this map, there are four of them. This one right here, this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. So it's kind of in a line. They don't seem like it. So the thing is, this one is actually safer than you think, and this one is a lot more contested than this one center. So if I'm a player, I always wanted to prioritize capping this contested one here first, rather than contesting, uh, capping the one in the middle. These ones are also sort of contested you know, in the shoals, but they're typically going to fall to the two base anyway, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But I've lost a few games where I was at the bottom and I was unable to capture this property. And I think that I can count that probably two or three times where I've lost because I have not capped the contested properties early enough. 
So you want to prioritize your contested caps first on this map because you might never get them back. Anyway, so Hogat brings out a tank this turn. Uh, builds an all infantry, still has some, had 1k in the, er, in the bank, but opts for that instead. Uh, and now, pretty standard infantry builds. I kind of skipped that term, infantry development, but there's nothing, you know, too unusual about it. Bringing the tank over here to the middle. Notice that he built the tank on the weak side over here, not on the strong side. I kind of like that because the weak side, if you buy a recon, that thing will zoom the hell up those roads faster than you can say Mr. <laughs> Uh, so you want to make sure that you have some sort of thing to deal with the recons. Artillery, I don't recommend on the weak side for that reason. You want to have your artillery coming from the strong side, or you have tank backup or something to defend it. Uh, and recons take longer to get over here. I don't like weak side recons as much either. You can go around, they can swerve around the corners over here, but like getting to the middle is not as easy as getting over here from the strong side. You can get a recon like instantaneously into the front lines after two turns. Get vision on the contested properties within two turns and start attacking them in three turns. So I agree with the tank on the weak side. I think that's a smart move by Hogat. And he's going for this contested property over here. I like that as well. He could go for this one over here, but he does not. He knows that this is the most contested property uh, in the vicinity alongside with this one over here, this one over here, and then blue is one over there. And then he opts for the later recon. A lot of people like to go recon before tank, uh, but I think in this instance, it makes sense that he builds the tank first and recon after. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, if he builds a tank one turn later and a recon turn earlier, I don't think it's the end of the world, but I think he's prioritizing defense and development before putting on pressure, which is a cautious approach. But this is the Fog Goblin Goblet, for God's sake. Uh, you don't want to, you want to be cautious with your approaches. You don't want to be too reckless. So unfortunately we can see him with cap it, everything that uh, Inkagark is capping. It looks pretty mirrored, to be perfectly honest. Hogat moves his tank over here on the side over here, defending both infantry, uh, preventing a recon from sitting on that property too, because he won't shot a recon. And let's say he has a tank in tow, you put the recon on top of the city, you fire on the recon, then the recon runs away, gives still plenty of vision, and then one of his tanks comes hit you. You don't want that, so you want to sit on the city over here. Kind of like that. Uh, Covering all the, you know, vulnerable uh, units over here, so it's nothing out of the ordinary. I like that. You probably want to start building on the strong side now, though. You only need one weak side tank early game to deal with the recons. You don't want to keep a tank chain on your weak side, because you want to do most of your fighting over here on your strong side in this general vicinity, where you're pumping out of two bases, rather than just pumping out of one. Uh, some people start off a tank on the weak side, and it makes sense. No arguments there. But then they start a tank chain and just continue and continue, like... You don't always have to chain tanks, you know, one after the other. You can build one on one side and then go on the other side and then start your tank on a different side. Like, you don't have to follow, like, repetitive measures all the time. Like, so I'd expect him to build something on a strong side. Going for an artillery and a tank, I kind of like that. Uh, perfect amount of funds. I mean, if he could, he probably would build two tanks here, but he doesn't have enough funds. But I like the artillery. Uh, you can plant in this forest over here. Maybe put some pressure on this property before blue can cap it or this one over here as well. If you put in this forest over here, you can deny this property from blue. It's on this weak side. Uh, so it can it can help defend these uh, contested properties. Blue does some crap behind the scenes we don't even know. Pulls the recon over here on the city. I like that. Within two turns, like I said, two turns that recon already has vision on some of the contested cities. This one right here and this one right there. He's not going to stop that one though. Brings down the infantry, artillery. I would expect him to bring build more tanks on the strong side. Like I said earlier, you can build chains on your weak side, but I don't recommend it. I So this one's a little dubious. I don't agree with this tank. When I saw this happen live, I was a little like, oh, okay. I guess he was really prioritizing preventing that property early because uh, it is contested. Like I said, it's one of the most four, uh, uh, the four most contested properties. However, I don't know if that really justifies bringing this tank all the way out of the action. I mean, it covers the weak infantry, don't get me wrong. This one's no longer covered. Uh, this one's no longer covered. Uh, so, uh, vulnerability is over there. So, it's, you know, it's a bit of a risk. Does build an artillery on the weak side, even though I said that wasn't a good idea. Okay, we'll see if it works out for him. But uh, that's not what I would typically build. He's going double arty. So, Mr. Hogat over here knows Inkigark is known as Mr. Arty Party. Uh, the arty enthusiast. So I guess he's trying to out Artie, the Artie lover. That's that's pretty bold. Because, uh, you know, in Kirk, by this point, 100% he's building artillery. I don't know if he's built two. I don't know if he's built three. But he's definitely built at least one. Especially with this weird-ass build where you have 8,000 funds at the beginning. And that's perfect amount for two infantry and an artillery. But he might have built an early recon for all we know. Just because everyone expects it from Inkagark. Just like everyone expects tanks from Tower Dread. You kind of want to shift things up. Maybe you want ultra-aggression. So now he's trying to capture this contested property over there, but the recon is in range. 
Whereas Red over here safely got the contested property first. See how Inkigark thought this one first and not that property first? Uh, that's not good. That's the more important property. So as, as expected, Recon interrupts. Although he should have captured the Calm Tower first. Those with a, a trained eye might see. But he attacks with the Recon before getting the Calm Tower. Lucky for him, he still gets the roll. That was a roll though. It wouldn't have been much of a roll if he captured the comp tower first. The, the recon would have done more damage. Beautiful. In that artillery covering the recon completely, unless, I mean, it goes behind or some crap, but that's kind of hard to do. And the tank coming its back up. See, this is where you'd love to have this tank over here in the middle, like I said earlier. In the middle, like right here, covering these two infantry. Like, then you'd shift it over and you're like, yeah, you're never getting that property. So that's where this tank over here and this artillery over here, they don't really do much to reinforce this attack right now by Red, so... Little dubious, but you know, you do what you can do, bro. So now I got 17k in income. That's enough for, no, not quite enough for a copter yet. Uh, in terms of like full cap, like tank, two infantry, and a copter is gonna cost 18k, so he does not have that amount quite yet. That's how much income he will have. Actually, uh, whoa, here you got 21k. Oh, I misread that shit. Okay, he's gonna have for three tanks then. Let's get it. Uh, okay, but goes for the anti-air because this is this the weak side. There is a airport over here makes sense Can't blame him for that building a recon on the weak side So he's going a lot of against a lot of the advice that I typically have but you know Hogat's better player than me. Let's see if he makes it work So Inkagark as expected comes and attacks the recon, but it doesn't kill it So the recon vision is still intact. Not only that that tank is in artillery range Oh jeez. Uh, oh, but 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 Inkagark's not going down without a fight. No, 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 no. He sees that artillery. There's no tank backup, though. It's one tank versus two tanks, and one's on a city, and a weekend artillery. Where the hell is this tank? Where the hell was the tank that was supposed to be built out there? Oh, but the weak guy. But, but the artillery, DG. You gotta build on the weak side. No. I was right this time. See? Hogarth's a better player, but sometimes we all make the mistakes, and there's a third tank in tow. See, Inkagark, he centralized his tanks. He has them with complete unit overlap. This is looking like it's uh, gonna get a little dicey for Mr. Hoagie Hat. So, Inkagark moves all his units around. Yeah, stuff behind the scenes. But Hogat, like I said, smart player. Strong player. Goes in there, balls to the wall, doesn't even check whether there's an infantry there. Doesn't care. I'm going in, folks. Cappy. All right. Most, one of the most contested properties, by the way. Going in, balls to the wall, not even checking. That's like crossing the street without looking both ways. You're just like, you just look at the crossing signal. It's, it says a, it says a green light. The cars are ongoing. It's like, eh, okay. Yeah, that's what that's like. That's 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 Meng's infantry territory right over there. I don't think that's going to be capping. However, Mr. Hogat's not giving up. Clumping his units together slowly but surely. Not over. Not trying to fight this. He saw all the tanks. You know it's going to get ugly. He he's not going to try to fight that. Bringing the anti in. Now bringing in two tanks and an infantry. Saving up a little funds next turn, I suppose, for a medium tank or for a copter, more likely. Uh, you know, conglomeration of uh, units. And does not get the roll. So luckily for Mr. Uh, Hogad over here, he has vision of that infantry right there. Actually, both infantry, which is nice. So you can get a kill with a recon and then you can get another attack off on that other infantry, which is nice. Although, another. So Inkagark has a lot of infantry over here. Inkagark is heavily invested in infantry. He's been popping out infantry. That means he's been building a lot of vehicles on his weak side. When you see a lot of infantry on one side, that means they're building a lot of vehicles on the other side. So that's a nice hint to know. That's a nice DG rule. If you see a lot of infantry on one side, there's gonna be a lot of vehicles on the other side because they're putting that cash money somewhere, you know? They're not just throwing that money away. That cash is going somewhere. So Inkagark, he's a patient. He's a patient fellow. Just going for the cap, not pushing. Not pushing his nice little push. He, he got a nice engagement. He weakened the artillery, he weakened the tank. He almost killed the recon. I mean, he probably wished he killed the recon, but could be worse. Not so bad. I maybe build an infantry wall here to prevent any other shenanigans, but you know, pretty, pretty tame. Nothing too out of the ordinary. But I think he realizes that he has a lot of units over here. So he's like, ah, I'm not gonna push my luck over here. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Mr. Hogat though, bad engagement for him, but not giving up. Still gonna prevent that cap, no matter what. Recon comes and kills. And uh, go retreat to heal. You wanna use these later for a nice uh, Rachel missile bait. So you wanna keep your infantry alive, heal them up for a later bait of the super. 
So it looks like Mr. Hoghat does have the artillery lock on the city. The artillery lock is in place. And these walls do not fall in one single hit unless you have an anti-air. So it's going to be pretty difficult to kill off this. You're going to have to get an attack, an attack here, kill off that infantry, kill off that infantry, and then get double attacks on this infantry to get into there. Actually, I mean, you can kill off this one and then, like, slide in there, but I haven't seen any Inkagark recon, so I'm not sure what intel he has. Actually, no longer you can't. This is a pretty damn good wall. NGL, not gonna lie, acronym, haha. -ha. Watch out. That's a pretty damn looking good wall. Even though there's a 3 HP artillery, it's still a pretty good deterrent. Let's not lie to ourselves. Build an infantry on the weak side. Can't go wrong with that. That recon should be enough. Wrong. And finished off. Boom. So, Inkagar going hard on this contested property. Not even contesting this one. He's like, you can have it. But over my dead body, you're getting this one over here. So he, he's feeling the pain over here. But in return, yeah, not getting that. Whoa, 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 what was that? Was that what we think it was? Inkagark artillery inbound. Right here. You know it's right here. The thing is, Inkagark, that dubious bastard. We build two artilleries lined up like this. I wouldn't put him past him. Artillery in the plains and artillery in the forest. The straight artillery line. That is scary. You don't want to mess with that. This is, you know, kind of scary. 3 HP, whatever. Two full HP artillery, though. You can kiss a medium tank bye-bye on a road or a plane if uh, you're not careful about that. So, yeah. Inkergark. Scary. However, Mr. Hogat. At least he's preventing that stupid little cap. And look, that recon we all thought was dead. Coming in clutch, giving vision. Can't see the artillery, but you can see the walls around it. And that might be enough to make Hogat act. In fact, he does. Hogat going in for the kills. Going in for the boom. Oh, and he gets to the artillery. Boom! Okay, so he's a little overextended. One of the artillery is all the way back here. It's not going to cover any of these tanks. So he's going into the belly of the beast, sort of. However, this is Inkergark's weak side. So although he can reinforce it in a little over one turn, uh, Hogat's going to have more forces over here, even though they re reinforce later. So, and we've already seen a tank is designated over here. I want to, I would be willing to bet Buckaroonies that Hogat would not have attacked this if he never saw a tank over here. Because that's another tank for the counterattack that could hit that artillery, that could kill off these units over here. So knowing, taking the knowledge that, man, there's a shit ton of uh, investment over here. I should attack. I know Hogat went through, that, went through his head right now. Going for the overload, capping this property over here, even though it's unlikely. Just trying to go balls to the wall, bringing in the cop. Duh. And uh, I mean, you better hope, hope to hell that there's no artillery or anti over there but i don't think there would be this early in the game but you never know so and still building recons recons are pretty good late game too i mean they get to the front line so fast they can interrupt caps they give you crucial vision right here you can see what's going on the question is is there an artillery in there if there is all three of these tanks are dead no questions asked and then you have to worry about well is this tank dead and if that tank's dead you get to the artillery and if you get to the artillery, this whole offensive is dead. Like, I, I understand there's a couple tankies over here, but like, that's gonna hurt. So, Inkagark, the question remains, is there an artillery in the forest? The question everyone wants to know. Didn't attack with an artillery yet. No, I don't see any artillery. I was almost convinced he had one. I use it though. Medium tank comes plowing in. That's what was waiting in the forest. Not an artillery, a medium tank. And if you look closely, no counters in the medium tank, except an artillery. Boom, boom, not. So this one was a little confusing to me. I don't know why he didn't go for the attack right here and weaken it off. Instead, going into artillery range, I guess he didn't know. I mean, vision, you know. Vision's a real thing, but that's going to heal up to 6 HP since he's Rachel. And another thing. Hogat is really close to the Rachel superpower. Oh, that's probably why I split it. If he attacked here, all the missiles would rain down here. So we wanted to spread out his tank a little bit, right? I understand. I understand. I understand. But still, that's a lot of unit value right there. 
Uh, so, uh, scary. Hogat, how much do you gotta get? 5,000, oh, pff, can make 5,000 charge easy time. Is it already there? 1,000 more. Now he's gonna use the superpower. Inkagark better have, you know, made my infantry wall, ball. Infantry ball, infantry wall. You choose what you want to say, but uh, hopefully two of the missiles better hit over somewhere over here, and one of the missiles is going to strike over here. We already know one at least is going to hit over those. Those are all going to go to 7 HP. That's fine. But if more than one go there and they go down to 4 HP, or God, I say even 1 HP, that's looking really dubious for Mr. Inkogark. So let's see where they land. Oh, he hasn't used it yet. He's weakening first to discourage a miss missile from hitting over here. He wants to shift the missile over there, I assume. Withdraw the units. Yeah, you don't want to get in the range of that. Yeah. It's like, take cover! Like, they're all retreating. They don't want to see this shit. Just get out of the missile range. Covering fire, baby! Plow, 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 boom, 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 boom. Three missiles hit the medium tank. Oh. You hate to see it. Inkagark did not use the move planner sufficiently. Granted, this is live. They have limited time. Inkergard takes his time normally, but three missiles, that was his that was his trump card. That was him beating all these forces back because he had no answer to the medium tank. And now suddenly, that thing's neutralized. That freaking infantry right there can finish it off if it wanted to. That sucks for Mr. Inkergard. Top it all off. Uh, looks like another, and now, and now Hogat smartly is separating his forces to prevent the same thing from happening. So it looks like, yeah, one's gonna go over here. That's a beautiful little ball. That's probably hit at least one, maybe two missiles. Probably two, actually. Five units over here. Six units over here. So two missiles are going to hit over there. One missile is going to hit over here. That's not bad at all compared to the one we just saw. That was a massacre. And now Hogat builds a medium tank later on. It was too late before, but now it doesn't even matter. Because that medium tank is dead he did. Inkergark, not using the super uh, yet. Uh, just um, killing off some infantry. Uh... You know, uh, hey buddy, you, uh, you gonna do something, uh, no. Inkergark did not use a super. I think he knew in the back of his head. Nah. Hogat, that bish, he built an infantry ball. He's directing those missiles away. I'm gonna hold on to him a little bit longer. Make him not be able to make a cohesive bunch of attacks. Uh, prevent him from going for a normal... Uh, traditional attack where you just bunch units together, have the artillery in tow. Now you can't go and attack and bring in the artillery in because you're going to get slaughtered by missiles. So I understand. Patience is a virtue. Hold on to that shit. I understand. The thing is, uh, Hogat's going to be building up more charge and he's going to get a missile earlier than uh, uh, whatever the hell his name is. Inkergark's going to get it next turn. So Hogat doesn't give a shit though. He's going in for the attack. Oh, well, no. Nah. That's fine. Missiles coming? Nah, I don't give a shit. Bringing all these units in. <sighs> Sneaky little Antair. I love it. Sneaky sneakers. Uh, a tank hidden in that forest? We'll not see it. I like the hidden uh, Antair. Let's see if it comes to play. Over here? Ah, hold the line! Yeah, they're just going to hold on to that shit. Their only job? Bring the missiles in. And the power. The rage of power. The lucky lass. No, not covering fire. You read that right. Lucky lass. So, okay, this better have nice payoff. Uh, hello there. Okay, so it's in range. Okay, but I don't think he has vision. Medium tank, another medium tank. The thing is, Inkergark, he bought two medium tanks. He had a medium tank chain going on here. We're not talking about a single little pesky medium tank. No, 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 we're way beyond, beyond that. We're talking multiple medium tanks. One shot in that infantry over there because we got a lucky lass on our ass now. Not killing that. Sees it now. Like, oh shit, you better have a follow up and doesn't know about that artillery either. Remember, it had 3 HP. Two turns on that city over there, 9 HP. That's the beauty of Rachel. She heals up her units super, super fast. So, making sure to kill it this time. Uh, you gonna interrupt that though, bro? Uh, Enki? Um, that guy's gonna cap your property. Uh, that, that's gonna cap your property too. Uh, you got him, uh, 
You're gonna you're gonna stop that? No. Okay. Twenty-four thousand income in Kagar. Twenty thousand. Four thousand income disparity. That's pretty big. NGL. That's pretty big. Uh, so let's let's look at the KD right now. Can I do that? Let's look at the KD right now. Boom, ba -da -boom, boom, boom. Right now, units killed. Inkagark ahead. Okay, we're looking good on the kills. Luckily, he's got a lot, four more infantry kills, less tanks, but he's killed an artillery. Oh no, he's killed, sorry. He's killed one, four tanks, he's lost three. Killed one artillery, didn't lose a single one. So he's definitely ahead on KD. That's keeping him in there with a the lucky last. However, uh, he did lose one medium tank and that freaking hurt. So ahead on KD, behind on income. Tale of two cities. And now he's gonna lose some units though. So not gonna be on the head on KD very much longer. Boom, definitely behind now. That entire sucks. And now Hogat's like, man, nah, no more cover and fire? Hell. Let him loose, boys. He revealed the copter there before. Smart idea, shift it to the strong side. You don't wanna keep your copters hovering around here too long because he's gonna build an enter in, in uh, retaliation later. So now just going all balls to the wall over here. Holding that property is a pretty big deal, so yeah. Incuggles, or Hogadius, bringing in the next medium tank. Medium tank chains, baby, let's go. Incagark, though. Nah, bruh. I ain't done. Boom. He knows where the artillery is. He knows that pesky artillery is in the forest. He's just gonna wait. Bide his time. Apparently doing some shit over here, who knows? But, seems to have coalesced his forces over here. Waiting for the perfect time so we can kill off both these tanks, get one adjacent. See, this is perfect right here because you need to have two things adjacent to the artillery to attack it. First, we need to have one that sh shows it, reveals the artillery, then you have to attack it. So he needs to kill off two of these tanks or the tank and the infantry in order to even see the artillery because this recon blocks you from wrapping around. This guy blocks you from wrapping around. So you have to kill off two of these, then you have to have one reveal, and then you have to have one attack. So you have to have at least four mu units minimum to even touch that uh, artillery right there. So, but, ba-boomless. Hogat coming in hot with the medium tank. And if he plays his cards right, he can put, he can put this uh, artillery to defend a medium tank retaliation. However, there's gonna be two fully beefied up medium tanks soon. Beefied up is in the Webster's Dictionary and UrbanDictionary.com, so get at me. So, Smart move, go, artillery going back to its favorite city over there. Perfect coverage, unless something snakes in there and attacks from behind, but that's unlikely. But Inkagark has another Lucky Lass, if he so chooses. He might want to hold on to the Covering Fire. I mean, the Lucky Lass got him some good kills last time, but it didn't do as much damage as the Covering Fire did. So, not terrible. Inkagark's licking his wounds a bit from the first Covering Fire. He's going to be more prepared for the second one, I would hope or else things are gonna get ugly because he's behind Lucky Last Bar 2. Remember that game, Inkagark versus Tordred? I think he used Lucky Last four times versus Andy. Not even considering using Temple Fire. Inkagark loves his lasses, man. In range, doesn't have any vision. Vision and Denial is playing a key role here. It doesn't have any idea. It doesn't even see this infantry right here. He needs a recon to come in and give, give some, uh... what did I say? Perfect vision. But, uh, let's see. Okay, he can get in there. Let's see what happens. And kaplow! Oh, 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 that little bastard didn't... You know what happens if that dies, though? Then he can slide in another tank on top. Ooh, kill the recon. That would have been nice. However, alas... Oh, no. We're talking about vision? Oh, hell yeah. Inkagar's got that in spades, bruh. Bring it in there. There you go. Boom! Man, these lucky lasses are pretty nice. Boom! Boom, oh, that's a little bit of an extension. That's a little bit of an extension. I would not have done that. I would have attacked this tank over here or attacked the recon. Because this gets in line with the reinforcements over here. Even if it was just a tank instead of a medium tank, it wouldn't be able to reach any of this stuff over here. It's just too far away. Got a little greedy. Now that tank is 100% deady dead. I, yeah, like I said, I would attack something over there. You just have to have some knowledge. Yeah, two hit KO this tank over here. Start capping. Actually, you can start capping, but he doesn't have an infantry in, in the and range, but, ooh, nice KO there. But, uh, ooh, that's, uh, remember what I said, don't attack recon or recon? Yeah, that's not looking good. So, uh, Hogat's looking pretty scary on this right side over here. Inkagark's having a fighting, like, fighting chance back over here. 
and you're pro probably able to retake those two properties. However, now the back contested property going to be retaken by Hogat. I don't see any interrupt coming. Okay, I was wrong. There's some infantry, but look how many damn infantry Hogat has. And oh my god. The super is coming again. We got Hogat super covering fire part two. Oh, Hogat, he's like, don't even get me started, bro. I got so many missiles. I think your art built a bunch of shit we don't even know. It, it, waiting for that super power. Covering fire. Where is it going to land? Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, uh, you hate to see it. Two missiles again, Inkagark. Dude. Build a better freaking ball, bro. Like, come on. Only one should be hanging your offensive, bro. That's got to suck. So Inkagark, once again, setback. In the in the two units that aren't even injured, this one's going to die. So there's all got a bunch of injured shit and then one medium tank. There's going to be a lot of other deaths. Dead. Dead. Not quite dead. And then over here, it's just a slaughter. Boom. 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 Oh. Massacre on this right side over here. Luckily, Inkergark does have some units over here on the left, but uh, he's all in on the left. And now we see the first golf ball of the match. We see the Neo Tank. Yes, ma'am. I know the ladies in the crowd usually get very hot when they see the medium tank. Well, I don't blame y'all. Medium tanks are, mmm, they're a sight to behold. So, yep, bringing in the medium tank, uh, doing not that much damage. Uh, just kind of licking his wounds over here, kind of consolidating, knowing that there's medium tank over there. Overextended in the first place, and that pesky freaking artillery is still alive. It, it got hit with 7 HP, it got down to 3 HP, then 6, then 9. It's gotten like at least 3 or 4 kills at this point. Maybe even, yeah, four. I think I got four kills so far. Just all out withdrawal. However, uh, it's looking a little precarious. Now it's 25,000 to 19,000. This is a lot of income for Mr. Hogat. And even more coming in. Oh, geez. Uh, Tort or whatever the hell your name is. In Cuggles, you better have some answer. And he, Hogat realizes, he's like, yeah, if I'm winning this hard on the right side, there's gonna be a tsunami of attacks on the left side. Smart move, withdraw. You go on to press your luck. Maybe try to prevent these two caps from going up. But other than that, just chill. Let your golf ball come in. Realize there's some tempo lost when you tech up. Every time you tech up, you lose some tempo. So you save up for a neo tank. You're gonna have two turns of no tanks. Like you just build infantry for a bunch of turns. So there is there's a glut. There's not gonna be some pressure. But uh, oh God, looking pretty good. Shifting his units to the center. He's shifting all the way. He's like, this is this is too easy. I'm just going to shift all my shit over here. Uh, cap this and then run back. I assume he's going to cap one of these and then just run away. You don't want to get too greedy. Recon spots all these front shifting forces over here. He's like, uh ooh. A lot of do, do, you know, evil planning behind the scenes that we can't see. But uh, Mr. Hogat. Bringing his units slowly but surely. Yeah, just a nice little calm look. Notice how this recon, it can't reach these cities, but these things are in perfect range to interrupt the city. The copters right there can interrupt the city. He's prioritizing keeping the caps, but oh my god. Just 8,000 income. That is nutty. What is the freaking kill to death right now? Let's look at the kill to death. It's pretty even. It's pretty even. That's not, that's not great. Pretty even, you want to be ahead. And then the covering fire, like, it's not looking good for Mr. Inkagark. He's got to have some pretty beefy strong attack coming. And it looks like he is. Look at that, the mother of all death balls, maybe, coming the way. But there's the Neo Tank. like, this is not going to be, Inkagark is not going to bow down. I know the Inkuggles, boom, doesn't die. You hate to see this freak. If he killed that, you wouldn't even know the artillery is there. So that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Inkagark, nearing another lucky lass. At this point, he's just the lucky lass kind of guy. What can you say? And there's no way you want to even kill this infantry and then go in with the tank. That's just suicide. Not even worth going in for the kill on this artillery at this point. There's just too many units. Look at that ball right there. Mm. Oh yeah, ball yeah. But uh, he's not going to allow that cap. The recon's coming in to make sure nothing gets recapped over here. Inkagark is going all out in the center now. He's like, 
taking the advice to heart, set your control, but honestly, you can't really just let this thing go on the side. Look at that income disparity, 10,000. That's a recon and artillery difference in income every turn. That's gonna add up. Look right now, luckily in the replay, you can see the, I didn't know how much units or income that Incogarp had at the time, but yeah, it's starting to get pretty lopsided. So uh, Incogarp's gonna have like, it's gonna have to go an all in attack, balls to the wall, death ball, bonanza. Hogat's not even like pushing over here. It's just like, I'm just gonna hold this. Hold on as long as possible. He can be patient. Building up his forces, he can tech up a bunch of stuff. Look at this, two recons, a tank, and a copter. You can't afford that much of the time. That's what, 24,000 in income? He's gonna have 3K in the bank. Uh, it's probably because of repairs, he couldn't afford all that, but. Anchor are coming in, seeing what he can see. I don't know why he attacked that copter, but he did. Going in for the kill. Oh, he went in for to weaken it up for the copter. No, wow, that's really ballsy. Ooh, okay, he got a little unlucky, but then lucky he was able to go in, but now sees the Neo tank. But Ingergar, he's like, F it, man, I'm going in. I see the Neo tank. I ain't even scared anymore, bruh. I need this property so, so, so bad. You don't even know how low my income is, he says to himself. But Hogan knows how much low his income is because he stole all his properties. And we're at day 20. Every day is another 10,000 he gains in unit value, uh, Hogat does over here. So, mm. He's gotta go all in, he's gotta go all in. I mean, it's not terrible. He's only down 20,000 in unit value, which is not the end of the world. He's ahead on unit count temporarily, but that income is just too, too bad. And now Hogas coming in. This might be the game changer, or the game ender, excuse me. The game has already been changed. However, it looks like Inkerarch is getting close to that super over there. Boom, Hogas really going in there. And the Neo tank even, boom. That's a nice first strike. However, you can bet your ball sack. There's gonna be an artillery there, or at least some sort of counterattack. If not, just a covering fire that's gonna weaken the shit out of everything. So Hogat or Inkergark praying that he has a nice covering fire that will be able to redeem himself after all this. And look, Hogat's like, F it, man. Worst comes to worst, I'm grabbing that HQ over there, bruh. I mean, it's in range over there, but he's gonna at least try. I mean, you can blame him. But Inkergark, this is the turn that makes or break. He is at half the unit value. 11 units less. Let's see what Mr. Inkergark can do. Does he have it in him? First, kills off the copter. He doesn't want to get things struck with the with the uh, missile that are going to die anyway, right? Withdraw some units. Brings in the covering fire. Fire! Boom, 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 boom. Not bad. So luckily for Inkergark, only one missile hits over here. If he brought in his tank and his other infantry, it would have been two, which would have been even worse because you need to have at least two hit over here. And luckily for him, two do land. One gets his big beefy units. One gets all his other conglomerate of units over there. So not the worst. Medium tank coming in though. Boom. Here they come. They're not giving up. Recon attacking a copter for some reason. Uh, there's... Confusion as what to attack and what not to attack, but he's going in. Look at all the units go, but the... Uh, I mean, whoa, he did a lot of damage, though. What was... Oh, shit, I need to go back and look at the stats on that shit. Damn, that was a lot of damage. 18,000 units. Holy shit, he did 70,000 in damage. However, despite all of that damage, a phenomenal attack by all means still behind in unit value. And the ever-present 10,000 income gap is just glaring at him. And now comes another covering fire. Fire, boom, 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 boom. Three. Three missiles strike over here. There was no, uh, there was no infantry ball. There was nothing. This was pure balls to the wall, testosterone fire and just go! No thought going into it all. This is an all in. And now Hogat's like, time to clean up the trash. Boom. There's copters going in with one turn away from the base. He's just going all in. He's like, I'm not scared of this shit. Killing off God knows what. Everything. And uh, Inkigark. 
below 40,000 income value. And uh, that's game right there. Inkagark. The story of this. Inkagark had a better beginning, I think. He had pretty good engagements over here. However, he lost the city. That's one thing. That was, I mean, even despite he losing the city, that wasn't the biggest thing. The biggest thing was Hogat got covering fire first and Inkergark was not prepared in the slightest. Hogat was well prepared for a covering fire. The difference was the covering fire in my opinion. Hogat played better, I think overall anyway, was able to put pressure on that city and eventually put pressure on the other side as well. However, the real, the big most obvious di uh, difference, three missiles struck over here at the beginning, two missiles struck later, then three to top it all off. That's eight missiles striking your most powerful units, eight out of nine attacking your attacking forces and, and just one hitting a random ball there early in the game whereas Hogat I don't even know I think only like half at most attacked his units like most of them attacked his infantry this this covering fire missiles and he was just having a field day with that and Inkyark I give credit to him those lucky last you know they're pretty strong man I'm not gonna lie about that it really pushed him back into the game but that income and he overextended a little too when the medium tank came in I think that's kind of when it be, spelled the beginning of the end over there but I just loved Hogat's clean opening too. Capture that property first. If, imagine if they had equal income and Inkagark was less pushed to, you know, when you're behind on income, you're kind of pushed to like regain some back. Like you have to get on the offense. You have this little itch you need to scratch. You have a feeling, a chip on your shoulder, you need to come back. But if you have equal income, that you don't have that chip on your shoulder and Inkagark can just settle down and relax. And I think that's when he plays his best is when he relaxes. Just chill. However, this is live format, so no one's relaxing. This is Rachel in live format. You have no time to think. Your missiles are popping off left and right. You don't even know where they're going to strike. But yeah, he clearly didn't have enough time to look in the move planner to make a, uh, you know, amalgamate or whatever the hell the word is, uh, a bunch of the infantries together. And uh, that spelled his end. So Mr. Hog had himself. We'll move on to the finals to face Mr. Go7. The one seed go seven versus the two seed, Mr. Hoghat. This is going to be one hell of a finals, and you guys are in for a big old treaty wheat. All right, guys. I see you next time in the next episode of the finals of the Fog Goblin Goblet.